Okay. So, uh, as I mentioned, uh, sub knot theory problems can be formulated in terms of tangles and operations among tangles. And if we want sort of like an algebraic knot theory, think in your mind like algebraic topology, so an algebraic tool set for knot theory, uh, then we want invariants of knots and links and tangles which should be compatible with those operations that we need. So the planar algebra operations and uh, given a strand, double it or reverse it or erase it. So actually, the correct way to write the last figure is, you know, to erase it. But then, I don't know what you would look at, so I'll just write it this way. This is an erased tangle, the erased strand. Okay, so uh, here is the, the key point. So uh, the key point is the Young-Baxter uh, technique. So Young and Baxter were st people doing statistical mechanics. They came up with whatever they did for completely different reasons. Uh, they never intended it to be used in knot theory. Uh, they probably don't know it's used in knot theory. Or maybe they know, but they don't care. Uh, but, uh, you know, that's, that's, that's how things are in mathematics sometimes. So, uh, uh, the idea is to... Uh, so, if you have a knot, I think I mentioned it already, or if you have a tango, I think I mentioned it already, uh, but if you have a tango, uh, you're going to, uh, uh, for every crossing, dump on the strands some elements of, of an algebra, and then multiply the elements you get along the strands, and then you'll get an element in the algebra tensor itself. I will call the algebra D. So given a knot a tangle with two strands, you will get an element in D tensor D. Uh, and then the question is, what properties do you need from the way you dump elements near the crossings and from the algebra D so that we will get this 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 good behavior there. Okay? Uh, so prepare for a lot of algebra today. Okay. So uh, first thing is we need to decide what to dump on positive crossings. So on a positive crossing, we're going to dump some element in the algebra of the algebra here and an element of the algebra here. So we need an element, so this will be mapped to an element R, which belongs to the algebra tensor itself. Okay? And, uh, uh, you know, uh, an element of an algebra tensor itself can all be, always be written as some uh, bi tensor ai, where bi belongs to the first copy and ai belongs to the second copy. And why am I going in reverse or alphabetical order? Because it fits me later. Okay? Uh, um, maybe one more thing. It's not a priori obvious which strand component corresponds to which algebra component. So my strands must be labeled, let's call them 1 and 2. And then the algebra components must be labeled 2, let's call them 1 and 2. OK? Uh, and then uh, I likewise should tell you what to do with the opposite crossing. So if you have a, 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 a negative crossing, then I will map it to, I will map it to, 
R bar, an element I will call R bar, which is also an element of D tensor D. And R bar can be written as some BI bar tensor AI bar. And again, I need to tell you which strand goes where. So here my convention, so my convention is that the upper strand is number one for these pictures, not in general. In general, it doesn't make sense to say which is the upper strand, right? But, but, but here I'll say, when, when labeling these crossings, upper strand is number one. So this is number one, this is number two, and it corresponds to copy number one of the algebra and copy number two of the algebra. And then with these conventions, it's clear where to map uh, a general tangle. So basically, this is a positive crossing. So I will be putting, so by the way, another way of remembering it is B on the upper strand, A on the lower strand. So here I will be putting a BI and a, an AI. Uh, here I will be taking, this is a, a positive crossing as well. So I will be putting a BI here and an AI here. And uh, here, this is a, also a positive crossing. What a boring guy I am today. So this is a positive crossing. So this will be, again, a BI here and an AI here. Except uh, I want to make it different copies of R, so it's easiest to uh, change the, uh, the summation variable, so to, to change the index. And then this, uh, 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 this tangle will correspond to, well, actually, I still didn't tell you which components belong to which copy of D, right? So I need to somehow label the components as well. So let's label them. Uh, I don't know, Toronto and Ontario. Okay, so uh, in the copy label Toronto, uh, tensor the copy length labeled Ontario, I have that the value is the sum over i, j, k of, let's see, on t, I see b, i, uh, a, j, b, k, uh, AI and on uh, uh, and on uh, Ontario, I see BJAK. So this is an element of an algebra. So far, so good. I gave you a given R and R bar. I gave you a fully well-defined prescription, how to go from a link that, from a tangle diagram to an element of a tensor algebra, uh, uh, a ten, to an element of a tensor product of some copies of the algebra. So now the question is, uh, what do we need? What do we, we need of D and R uh, so that uh, we will have all the good properties. Okay? So the first thing is I need to be able to multiply. D needs to be an algebra. What is an algebra? So definition, well, you sort of know, but I want to write it nevertheless. So definition uh, in Algebra is a vector space D along with a multiplication map. So the multiplication map is a map that I will call M, and it goes from uh, the algebra tensor itself with image with image in the algebra, which is associative, such that. What does associativity mean? It means that if you take 
uh, three elements of the algebra, and you multiply the first two while doing nothing to the, to the other two, to the other one, so you apply m tensor i, you land in d tensor d, or alternatively, you multiply the last two while doing nothing to the first, so you apply the identity tensor m, and again you land in d tensor d, and then you multiply these two, or you multiply these two, uh, uh, then this diagram commutes. This is associativity. Okay? Now, uh, in general, uh, we will have plenty of copies of the algebra. And we will want to multiply an element from that copy with an element from that copy. And uh, you'll always, it's always confusing. Uh, well, sorry, not always confusing. So in, 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 in situations like that, there is a better notation. And the better notation is as follows, as follows. You just declare that the is that whenever you make a tensor copy, a tensor product, you name the, the, the factors. So you call this one factor number one, this one factor number two, this one factor number three. By the way, it's not even necessary uh, to name them in order. So I could have called this one Toronto, this one Ontario, and this one Canada. Okay? It just doesn't matter. And then, instead of writing M, I will write uh, M and then put uh, uh, a superscript, uh, which factors are the inputs. So this one is M12. And where do I put the output? So you know, I need to, so, so, so if I need to tell you where to put the output, I need to label these. So this will be D3 and D1. And then uh, this will be, you multiply 1 and 2 and put the output at 1. And here, let's call this one D1. And then here you multiply 1 and 3 and put the output in 1. And likewise here, instead of writing the identity terms around, at the moment, it looks complicated, but later it will become simpler. So, instead of uh, writing i tensor m, I'm saying that I'm multiplying 2 and 3 and putting the output in, let's call this one 1 and 2, so I'm doing m 2 3, putting the output in 2, and then this multiplication is m 1 2, putting the output in 1. Okay? And let me record here all the equations that I need. So the first equation that I need is uh, m121 followed by uh, m131 is equal to m23. Uh, two, two followed by uh, m uh, M1, 2, 1, and this equation is also called associativity. Okay? Good. Well, uh, we need a little more. So, uh, in this tangle, all the strands have crossings on them. But what if we had a strand with no crossings on it? Where would we map it to? So we need an, a, an element of the algebra so for in, to which you will map empty strands. And furthermore, this element must have the property. So you see, uh, how, does, how do the planar algebra operations work? I, I failed to mention it. The planar algebra operations operation works by work by so you know, if you have a, 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 a one tangle and you are connecting to it another, well, you just multiply the elements along the strands. That's exactly how 
uh, I mean, that follows from this, this construction. So basically, this element that this is uh, uh, mapped to, so this map must be mapped to some specific element. And this element must have the property that if you multiply it with anything, you don't change it. Because connecting an empty strand to an existing tangle doesn't change it. OK? So uh, I need an, uh, an element eta, which is also called, well, which behaves like the identity. But I like to write thing, use, things using spaces and, and, and commutative diagrams. And again, it will pay off later when every, where everything will be uniform. So rather than an element, I will think of it as a map from Q into the ground field, let's say, is Q. So I will think of it as a map from Q into D. Let's call it eta. And this map uh, should map an, ele a, 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 an element A of Q to A times 1 of the algebra. So, uh, uh, so now I need uh, such a map eta. And what properties should it have? So it should be an identity map. How do you write uh, being the identity? So here's one way. You look at D tensor Q. D tensor Q you can map uh, via uh, identity tensor eta to D tensor D which you then can multiply, and uh, this goes into D. And uh, on the other hand, D tensor Q is just isomorphic to D. Tensoring with the ground field doesn't do anything. So you want this diagram to be commutative. This is the fact that eta is a right unit. It's a multiplication by one on the right is a unit. And likewise, you need uh, the commutativity of this diagram. Q tensor D goes via eta tensor the identity to D tensor D goes to D uh, in two ways, uh, like that. OK? And again, if I wanted to use notation like this, then uh, I'd write it as this, as that. So eta, OK, so let me label uh, uh, the, 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 the d's. So this is d1, this is d1, uh, this is d1, this is d2. So eta creates a unit at position 2. So I'll call it, so I'll call it uh, eta 2. And this is m1, 2, 1. So the equation I need is uh, eta 2 followed by m1, 2, 1. So if you create an identity in component 2 and then multiply 1 and 2 into 1, you've done nothing. So this is equal to the identity. And also create an identity in component 1 and then multiply 1 and 2 into 2, this is again equal to the identity. OK. Uh, wait. OK. This, this is, uh, OK, uh, allow me to erase all of this and move on to the more interesting equation, to more interesting equation, to further interesting equations. So, uh, well, uh, the next thing I want to worry about is so-called uh, braid-like Reidemeister moves. So, uh, um, let me explain. So uh, 
Uh, here is a Reitermeister move. Okay. Uh, whenever I when I wrote Reitermeister moves before, I didn't bother to specify the orientation of the strands. And what I meant was all orientations. You should the, the move should hold no matter what the orientation is. But now it matters what the orientation is because the orientation determines the order by which I multiply things. Okay? So, uh, uh, so, so there is this Reitermeister 2 move, but there is also a Reitermeister 2 move in which the strands are oriented, uh, multiplied the opposite way, uh, oriented in the opposite way, one of which is flipped. And uh, I will call, so, so we never talked about braids, but braids are kind of tangles in which, like braids in, in human hair, not like my hair. Uh, but braids in human hair, like the, the strands, always go down. So a braid is a tangle in which, which can be written in the plane so that the strands always go down or always go up, it doesn't matter. Okay? So this is a braid like Reitermeister 2 move, and this isn't. By the way, this one has a cycle here. If you look at the orientations, they make a cycle. So this will be called a cyclic R2 move. Okay? But I will deal with the cyclic R2 move later. For now, let's do uh, uh, braid-like moves. So what is the relation we get? So uh, this is, or what, what equation do we need to write? So. Here we're going to put a copy of R. This is a positive crossing. Here we're going to put a copy of, this is a negative crossing, so a negative crossing, so a copy of R bar. And here, uh, this will be B I A I, and this will be uh, B J bar, A J bar. And the equation we need is that sum over i and j of, uh, so let's see, on the first row, let's decide that the strands are labeled 1 and 2. So on the first round we have bi bj bar, bi bj bar. On the second strand we have ai aj bar, ai aj bar. And we want this to be uh, eta 1, or more precisely, we want this to be the identity on strand 1 and the identity on strand 2, right, because this is this. But I've replaced the identity with maps. So really, this should be the element 1 of Q, which you feed into this composition of maps. Okay, so, uh, uh, and by the way, well, whenever you have an algebra, if D is an algebra, then D tensor D is also an algebra because you can multiply component by component. But this is exactly what we did here with R. This is exactly R times R bar in D tensor D. So the conclusion is that R bar must be R inverse in D tensor D. I think I understand. Like, what is the like, sign of the verifying eta 1? So, uh, so, you know, even more precisely, but I will never be that precise, uh, this is. Uh, well, either 1 tensor 1 inside Q tensor Q, uh, to which you feed, which you feed into eta 1 tensor eta 2. Uh, but I would like to think of it as 1 fed into eta 1. The output of this is in uh, D, sorry, in D labeled with 1. Uh, so, you know what? 
you know, may, maybe I will declare, well, okay. And, and then, and then uh, I want to fit this into eta 2. So I have to create a 1 in position 2 uh, using the isomorphism between D and D tensor Q, and then apply eta 2. So strictly speaking, that's what I'm doing here. OK. Uh, but anyway, I, 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 uh, maybe I didn't think the triviality is enough, so I should, I should figure out a, a nicer way to say it. But anyway, the equation we get is that R bar is equal to R inverse in D tensor D. And it can be written in, 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 in this language as well. OK. Then there is Reidemeister 3. Let's do the cyclic move later. So, uh, so let's do uh, Reidemeister 3. So, uh, oh my god, what does Reidemeister 3 look like? So this is equal to that. Sorry, this is equal to uh, I hope I wrote the correct Reidemeister 3. OK? Uh, so the most common way, OK, sorry. So uh, 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 let's label the component 1, 2, and 3. OK? So this is 1 and 2 and 3. And in principle, I need to put an R here, an R here, an R here. It's a lot of writing. Uh, but here is a nice way of, summary, of, of writing this equation. So this is an R placed on tensor factors 2 and 3. So I'm taking R and putting it in on tensor t factors 2 and 3. And then I'm multiplying it with a copy of R placed on tensor factors 1 and 3. So R, 1, 3. And then I'm multiplying it with a copy of R placed on tensor factors 1 and 2. So R, 1, 2. And this is an equation which is written in D tensor D tensor D. And the convention should be that when I write R23, I means I mean put R in tensor factors two and three and put the identity in tensor factor one. So it's really identity tensor R23 and then R in tensor factors one and three and identity in tensor factor two and uh, so on. Well, this is the left hand side, and it should be equal to the right hand side, which I will write here. So I also want to have R uh, 2, 3, R 1, 3, R 1, 2 equal to the transpose. Same thing, but read it the opposite order. So R 1, 2, R 1, 3, R 2, 3 in D tensor. Uh, one, two, three. Okay. Uh, then come the cyclic Reidemeister moves, which by now I've erased. So let's read, uh, let's understand this equation. So uh, let's write it uh, like that. So uh, let's call this component one. This is component number two. Let me use uh, for the index, uh, let me use i here and j here. Uh, this is a positive crossing. This is a negative crossing. So the equation I get is sum of so let's see, 
sorry, so it's sum over i and j. And then on strand number one, I see, first of all, an overcrossing, but with a negative sign. So this is a bi bar. And then, again, it's an overcrossing, but now it's a positive. So it's a, uh, sorry, this is a bj, because the index here was j. So this is bi. Yeah, so this is it. And on strand number two, I see uh, a i and then b, sorry, and then a j bar. Okay? So this is, oh, and this should be, uh, again, eta 1, eta 2. Maybe I'll, I'll just write this one. The identity on both sides. OK? Now, uh, this is weird, right? So this is not r cross multiplied by r bar. So it's not. Uh, well, it's r multiplied by r bar, but where you reverse the order of the, of the second component. So the way to say it, so one way to say it is to write the equation in full, like this. Another way to say it is to say that uh, whenever you have an algebra, you automatically get a second algebra called uh, D-op. So what is D-op? D-op is, as a vector space, it's the same, so same, uh, same vector space as D, but with the opposite multiplication. So where uh, if the multiplication, uh, so the multiplication A times B, you know, let me write it this way. A, A times B with the opposite multiplication is defined to be B times A, where the usual time, where, 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 where this stands for the usual multiplication. And then what is written here is uh, R bar is equal to R inverse in D tensor, use the opposite multiplication on the second tensor factor. Weird equation. OK. Then comes Reidemeister 3 and Reidemeister 1. OK? Uh, and, 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 and these come with good news. So good news, uh, Reidemeister 3 cyclic, so there is a cyclic Reidemeister 3, it looks like this. Uh, uh, this goes like, right, here is a cyclic Reidemeister 3. So this should be equal to uh, to that. So the cyclic Reidemeister three follows from uh, it follows from. Uh, uh, the braid light moves from the from the uh, braid like uh, relations and uh, the Reidemeister two, which is the cyclic Reidemeister two, which we already discussed. Uh, why is this true? Uh, why is this true? Uh, 
oh my god, I thought I knew that, but I forgot. There is something very, very simple that one does, and, uh, and it's uh, and it's easy, but I'm losing it. So what do you do? I'm sorry. It's uh, uh, It's, it's too hard to say in words. Uh, so you know what? Uh, sorry, I can't follow you, right? Uh, you either have to get up and do it, or... Uh, uh, I'm not sure I'm correct. Okay. Riedermeister 2 move. Okay? But now, uh, uh, but now, now I want to slide this to the other side. Uh, is this braid like or cyclic? So this cycle here is uh, is break up. It's not a cycle. Like uh, yeah, it's 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 break up. So uh, so I can slide this to here, and then I can undo the Reidemeister move here, and I go to the right hand side. Sorry, this was so stupid that I forgot it. And I wasted time. I'm sorry about that. Uh, so, uh, so I don't need to write this. That was the point. The moment I wrote these equations, I don't need this anymore. And finally, uh, there is Reidermeister 1. So you see, I never cared about Reidermeister 1 because I'm allowing myself to talk about frame knots. Uh, but I do need this relation, so this must be equal to that, okay? And uh, but this one follows 
So this one follows from uh, Reidemeister 2 and 3. So basically, you, uh, so let's write it. So you uh, slide this strand down. So it means doing a Reidemeister 2 here, a Reidemeister 3 here, and then around another Reidemeister 2. But at the end, it goes like this. And then you, uh, wait, you slide this one down. Oh, don't tell me I, I got, an, uh, I, I got uh, uh, confused again. Uh, Oh, no, 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 it goes over, not under. Sorry. If I slide this down to the other side, it goes over. But now I can do a Rider Master 2, and the whole thing falls apart. So I also don't need to check Rider Master 1. So we're done. Ah, I'm sorry about that. I wasted valuable time. But now comes the, the uh, 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 another part, right? So I need, I need good behavior under these operations. So what does it mean? It means, so again, I have a complicated tangle and I have a strand going through it. I need to be able to double it. So this, this strand is going to have a uh, like the original strand is, is going to get a value associated with it in the algebra D. I need a value in two copies of D. So I need a map, so I need a map uh, delta going from D into D tensor D. And it should have properties, of course. So delta should stand for the, the strand doubling map. What's the most interesting place where you want to apply it? You want to apply it to the generator. So I want to know that, well, if you apply delta to this, you get uh, this. Right, if I apply delta to strand number one. So the property I want but you see, this is a product of two R's. So uh, the property I want is a delta tensor one applied to R. So if you apply delta to the first copy, let's call this one and this one two, uh, and let's call the uh, tensor factors here, one, two, and three, then I want the delta tensor 1 of R will be equal to R2, 3 multiplied by R1, 3. So let's write it here. R, uh, sorry, delta, well, I'm using mixed notation. So delta tensor R, 1 of R is equal to R2, uh, 3 are 1, 3. Uh, and you know what? Let me, for now, not write it in the other notation. Uh, but, and, and likewise, I want to know that uh, the same thing w w will happen with uh, doubling the second strand. So again, if we call it 1, 2, and 3, the property here is one tensor delta, one tensor delta of R, this is just doubling the second strand, is equal to R12, R13. R12, R13. I, I suppose I should copy it, but uh, I won't. But then there are more properties. So I want to know that 
Uh, well, if I triple a strand, well, I can triple it in two ways. So uh, if I start with a single strand, I can uh, uh, double I can double it to two strands. Or you know what, let's call them one and three. So one and three. And then I can double it, double them, double number one into one and two. So I will get one, two, three. But equally well, I could have uh, doubled it into strands that I will call one and two, and then double the second strand. So delta uh, one, sorry, delta two, uh, two, three, and I'll get the same thing. Uh, so I want the corresponding property for algebras. So I want that uh, uh, the map uh, delta uh, followed by one tensor delta will be the same as uh, delta followed by delta tensor one. Okay? Uh, so uh, the commutativity of this diagram is called co-associativity. And I also want co-associativity here. And uh, I think at the moment these are all the properties. Uh, no, I want some compatibility with uh, eta. So I want that uh, if you have eta one and you follow it with double one, double, doubling one into one two, then this is the same as eta one, uh, eta two. So doubling an empty strand is giving you two empty strands. Okay, then I need uh, this one and that one. So I need a, a further operation uh, uh, S, so S corresponds to strand, strand reversal and it should be going from D to D. And I need, right, because, I mean, there is still a strand, it just gets reversed. And I need an operation epsilon going from D to Q, so deletes a strand. Okay? And uh, the, the, so if eta was the unit, epsilon is called the co-unit, and S is called the antipode. And then there is a list of properties that they have to satisfy. I don't have the time to go through them, but I will next time. But let me say uh, a few properties. But let me just say a few simple ones, OK? So first of all, S squared is equal to the identity. Because uh, you see, Reversing a strand twice should give you itself. This is correct in our context. Late, later it will become incorrect, and that's important. But for now it's correct. Uh, second, you see, if you multiply A and then B, then uh, that's like multiplying uh, their opposite in reverse order. So S is not a homomorphism from D to D, but a homomorphism from D to D up, or an anti-homomorphism, an anti-homomorphism. And then the co-unit should have properties, and I'm now really out of time. But next time, I will write the full list of properties, and each one means something tiny, simple, meaningful, topological. 
And later, we will actually want such, such algebra. It's, you know, sorry, not we already want such algebra, but later we will actually construct them. Okay? Uh, okay, so see you on uh, Friday. Sorry, I'm uh, a little confused today. Okay.